I became obsessed with that score to be number one on this game, you know, and, and to the point where, you know, I tell people sometimes I, I, I don't like saying it all the time, but now it's going to be on a podcast. So this is good. <laughs> now, there were nights every once in a while where I would stand there and for a few minutes, I'd just stare at that machine because I wanted that score so bad. Were you just trying to manifest just it? Like, I, that is my goal. It. It's yeah. right there. I can do it. Yeah. I need to make it happen. <laughs> It's very calming and relaxing. In fact, um, I often don't die. Many people who can get this far, they don't die because they're stressed and they're playing and they can't figure it out. It's, it's, you're so calm and relaxed that you don't think about the game. You start thinking about everything else in your life. And, uh, you die because you're not paying attention or thinking. That's how you die. Because you, can, you can't die any other way in this game. Well, you can play forever. I tell people the number one thing that, that got me to this point, that got me the records, is that I simply, I, I wanted it more than anybody else. Like, I wanted to be the best at this game. And, um, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's fine, you know. The one guy even said, you know, you can believe that all you want, but that doesn't mean it's going to happen. But for me... I am a firm believer that if you want something uh, more than anything else, you can go out and achieve it. You can do everything else in my life was set aside so that I would play Galaga, master this game, and 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 get those records. And I knew I was going to get them. I just didn't know when or how. Video games are really popular right now, and one Cedar Rapids man is making a name for himself right from his own kitchen. My wife decided that she'd never see me again if, if uh, it's in the basement. So we had it put right here in the kitchen <laughs> so she could, she could sit on the couch and, and uh, watch TV while I try to break a record. Galaga is a Japanese arcade game released in 1981. And let's just say Dorrington is addicted to it. To break the world record, you have to have an incredible amount of skill, patience, and endurance. So it's a 14 hour game. <laughs> to break that world record, yeah, you can park the ship and take a break for about 10 minutes. <laughs> Go use the restroom for getting a drink of water. I wonder if my wife would let me put a video game in our kitchen. Maybe. Probably not. I just got to think of negative thoughts. You know, Peter Pan thinks of like positive thoughts to fly. To get through a tattoo, you think of negative thoughts. Like, man, I hate my wife. Yeah, burn. Oh, I hate my job. Burn. <laughs> wow, that just happened. <laughs> what was your reaction when you heard I got the world records? Huh? You knew your buddy was like the champ. I was like, this son of a bitch here. I know this guy. And then I'm like, wait a minute. I'm at home by myself. Can't really tell anybody. Getting tattooed is like playing arcade games. <laughs> Getting tortured for hours. You have your whole side tattooed. I'm sure you can handle this. Okay. Oh, that's precious. That is so precious. Oh. Is this, can I call it a video game obsession? Is it an obsession? Oh, it's 100% a video game obsession. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> no Dude, questions about that. 1 800 games off. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, so this is my game collection here. This isn't all of it, but um, I just, over time, I just collected uh, games throughout garage sales and other things, so I have tons of, like, uh, this is Game Boy games, just piles of them, um, NES games, uh, I have some Xbox, here's Game Boys, 
Super Nintendo game. I got a ton of those. Um, just countless stuff. Is this in here? Oh, Mario. Mario. Let's see. Final Fantasy 3. Uh, Dragon Ball. Star Wars. Here's Genesis games. 64 games. I have Atari games. I just have all sorts of stuff. I haven't uh, gone through it all in a long time. I gotta sort it all out, but I have consoles and stuff. Um, and just more and more games sitting in boxes. Here's a... We were the cool kids growing up. Oh my God. The first time that I really heard about Jordan playing Galaga uh, was when he broke the world record. He didn't tell me really anything about it beforehand. Uh, probably because I would have made fun of him. All right, good start. No points. That's a tough game. Zero points. And with that, Jordan is now winning. There are not many people in this world that can say they have a world record. Like that they're best in the world at something. Like there's like, and granted it's a little bit different, unique thing, but I mean, it's a, it's the whole world. It freaks me out. <laughs> we would ride in the van, right? On road trips and my dad had the TV and he figured out how to hook up the Nintendo and I remember specifically he would be going to like game stores to get like magazines or stuff to figure out like, hey, if I park this thing here, or if I go into this weird thing that doesn't look like anything, but it actually is, then I'm going to like transport into a secret level. And I was always really impressed by that because I was just like, okay, jump, run, that's it. So he was always doing doing that and getting to like the really far. And then when I would get really mad, I'd be like, can you get me past this one? And he would be a good brother and do it, so. He really was uh, an okay athlete, not great. An okay student, not great. Um, and uh, so my thoughts were, you know, that if he was trying to become a gamer a little bit and do some of those things that he might be okay. And so when suddenly I was told that he was probably as good as anybody in the world, I, I was probably as shocked as anybody you, you can imagine. I didn't really understand it completely. I just thought it was taking a lot of time away from family and all that. And I would try to call him. And of course, he'd never pick up because he's playing the game and he can't stop to talk to me. So I kind of would get after him about that once in a while. But once he got there and actually did it, um, we all were thrilled for him because it was a big deal. I started that day and I played for an hour and a half and I lost too many ships and I knew I couldn't have a big game. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I gotta restart. So I restarted and I lost three ships at like 1.5 million and I was like, oh, well, I'm just gonna keep going and we'll see what happens. And that's when I did like one of the longest runs in Galaga history, which without losing a ship, it was about six hours. Wow, on one ship. On one life so to speak, because Galaga, you have two ships, you can double up. Yeah. But, um. Were you just like locked in? Oh like... my gosh. Now see, I have a really unique hand technique. I learned to play like this, rather than always like this. And that's what makes my hand go faster. Uh, or, uh, I mean, last longer. I can, I can um, play a lot longer because this tires you out. I apologize, the tip of my finger's cut off, so it just looks just gnarly, I bet. <laughs> a 
lot of the fun in video games breaks down when you do sort of get to like the master level um, because it's I, I personally get the most enjoyment out of a game um, that I can react to in unique ways as opposed to I know that the game is going to do one of ten things and I have this these different methods of dealing with it. The whole thing is kind of like, I, I kind of waffle back and forth, like this whole thing is really silly and this whole thing is really awesome. Galaga is a little bit different because um, there are settings such that you can keep getting extra guys as you continue to play and theoretically the game can go on forever and there's also settings where um, your the number of ships that you get are limited and Jordan actually broke both of those records in a single game so that means <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong but you were actually playing on marathon settings but you broke the record for the five ship rule set and then continued on in that same game and you broke the record for the marathon that's correct. like that's that was ridiculous that like first of all it's ridiculous that someone would think that they could do that um it's kind of ridiculous that these these scores and these competitions take place and then it's ridiculous that jordan had actually accomplished that task <laughs> it was amazing it was inspirational So I used to come here often, and then uh, COVID hit, and uh, so I obviously everybody stopped going outdoors for a little bit, and then you know after COVID got done, uh, just wasn't able to get up here because of money situations. But now it's great to be back, and here here you are. <laughs> <clears throat> so this is the test kit. Same same thing. Daughter card. It'll plug into Jordan's Z80 processor. Pull that out. Put it in this thing. This thing in the hole. But, you know, I just want to point something out. Isn't this crazy? This is a game. This is a video game. That is yeah. what Donkey is... Donkey Kong PCB. TKG-14. It's right. all the hate you could ever need in a game right there. There's a story. <laughs> <laughs> this... Junior here it took me like 10 years to get um, from Pete's Pizza in Indianola. I grew up playing this game. But I would go in and I would always ask the guy, it, it was broken, and I'd ask him, can I fix it? Here's my number. Let me fix it. He'd never call me, you know. So I'd just walk in there and he'd be like, no. <laughs> And then I walked in one night and he was like, no, before I could barely get through the door. And his daughter was work, working in there, who now owns it, I believe. And she's like, what do you mean? And he's like, he wants to buy the Donkey Kong Jr. And she's like, we'll sell it to him. It hasn't worked forever. She's like, sold. And he's like, no, you can't sell it. You can't sell it. And she's like, well, I'm going to call mom. So she called her mom on the phone in the pizza in the restaurant. Didn't answer. She's like, I'm going to try one more time. If she don't answer, it's yours. I was like, oh, yes, yes. And um, so she called, didn't answer. I willed out the game for $200. It didn't work. I, I, I got a different monitor. This was before I could really fix anything. Um, got a new monitor. I've been playing it ever since. All right, so this is a, a daughter card for a Donkey Kong PCB and you take your Z80 processor chip out and this plugs into the Z80 port and then your Z80 goes into the daughter card which gives you Donkey Kong 2 ROM. And that's kind of how I started. I was just like, I think I told you I got my first kangaroo game and it was like I bought it for 35 bucks and the guy said it didn't work and he just didn't know that there was a switch on the back of it and it was just needed turned on. We probably, you and I have probably watched so many games online. 
together. Just I watch your right. games, you watch my yeah. games. It's insane. I probably watched you play, man, I'd say thousands of hours of, I mean, it's the truth. I mean, you've done the same. Okay, so we got Donkey Kong kill screen. Donkey Kong Jr. kill screen. Crazy Kong kill screen. Donkey Kong Remix kill screen. Donkey Kong Jr. kill screen, first one to do it. World record holder. We can be here all day with all the scores you've done. <laughs> and that, that's that's all I can, yeah, that's that's the Donkey Kong stuff. Anyway. That's that's the big stuff. That's I've done a million on Excitebike. I'm really close to doing maxing out Circus Charlie. Circus Charlie. Where dreams come true. Y yes, 100%. There is a certain type of person, and he is that type of person. Like, I could play Donkey Kong. Like, I, I'm good at Donkey Kong. I'm good at Junior. I'm good at Donkey Kong 3. I'm good at Crazy Kong. I can get maybe 600,000 on Galaga. If I wanted to do any more than that, I would have to really hate myself. Yeah, it's working great. No issues. I don't know what you did. Was there something loose? No, it changes the 80. That's all it was. Thanks, buddy. It's unplug, loose. unplug. Oh, I meant to do a double shot. The tournament weekend lands on the same weekend as my anniversary, and uh, yeah, I mean it's 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 tough. I did, I, I was asked if I could go last year, and I couldn't. <laughs> so Jordan asked me. He's like, "Do you want to go? Do you want to go?" And I was, he's like, "I think it'd be great if you went." And it's like. Uh... <laughs> Jordan's are super loose. That's the way I like them. Not when you're not working correctly. Sloppy <laughs> jalopy. This year I was able to kind of convince her and just be like, uh, yeah, uh, I think this would be a great idea. Like, I just go on the weekend and then we have our anniversary. And it worked. So, here I am. Every night, hours at a time. Pew, 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 pew. Hours and hours. Luckily, I'm hard of hearing, so I didn't really, it didn't bother me too much. I just cranked the TV up and rolled with it. But at the same time, she 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 loves the fact that I, you know, had gotten two world records in it. I worked really hard to get there, and um, she's very proud of me. She doesn't love sharing the attention with Galaga, but you know. I am so happy that he's branching out to other games because I mean, he can't really get any better at Galaga. So like, let's move on to the next. Let's make you the best. As far as pursuing, you know, a dream goes, uh, I think 100%, he's done it once, you know? I don't think anybody really thought he was gonna become the greatest Galaga player. So he's already done it with one game and now uh, we're gonna go see if he can do it twice. Donkey Kong, uh, I, I don't even like it. All right, so what I do? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. If you wanna get anywhere in life, you have to have a commitment period of no matter what you're doing, whether you're playing a stupid game of Donkey Kong or driving eight hours to get to play a stupid ga game of Donkey Kong. You know, you gotta have that commitment. And obviously, there's a little bit of craziness that goes into it too. Uh, this is Quarter Barrel. Uh, this is the place where I went and learned how to play Galaga and my home, the best place on earth. Um, it's been around about five years, coming up to six, I believe, I'm pretty sure. I'd have to double check that, but let's, uh, let's go explore Quarter Barrel. It's got a really cool theme to it. It's got an 80s theme. Man, there's my news article. A lot more arcade games here. This is the Galaga I practice on. That 
the time it had a uh, computer monitor in it, and now it has its original monitor back in it. It's in great condition. What up, people? Hello. This is the brewery. Uh, they brew their own beer here, which is fantastic. Awesome. Uh, they put them in these barrels. That's why they call it the quarter barrel. One of the big things for me, the uh, games kind of pop out at you. Uh, an arcade cabinet sucks you in wherever you're at in the world and you see one because you don't get that from a, a console machine unless you go into some guy's house and you see the game sitting there. But it's got lights, it might have a gun that you shoot on it, it might have a uh, joystick and buttons, it could have a steering wheel. Uh, arcade cabinet is a giant billboard, like come play this game. If there was a place like this like 10 years ago, I would have been all over it. It would have been a lot sooner. I had to wait. I had to wait that long because I was interested in doing something with Galaga, but it, there's just nothing around, so. I tried going to places. I went, I went to like Chuck E. Cheese's one time and they had one there and it was just in terrible condition. I went to... Um, wait, you went to Chuck E. Cheese? Oh, yeah, they had it. How old were you? Well, <laughs> must have been like 30, something like that. You went to Chuck E. Cheese, you were 30 years old, they check your ID at the door? No, they didn't. <laughs> they just... They, they just let, let me in. walk right in. Well, With I mean, no they, they serve beer there, you know? Yeah, like, sure. it, it is a little different place, you know? I've been kicked out of every yeah. bar except for Chuck E. Cheese. It wasn't like I was in the ball pit. <laughs> <laughs> I was just off to the side playing Galaga. <laughs> Killing me, I gotta go and get Advil or Tylenol. I can't play, I can't do anything right now, so I'll be right back. I just need, uh, I just got a bad headache. There's a gas station up the street. It's just hard to concentrate, hard to focus. I'm tired. But, if I get some Tylenol, I should be okay. Back that or go again. There we go. And you know what? Matter of fact, he is the guy that's barred from over there off 8th Street. That's the one by the, that's the store that I normally work at, and he's barred from my store. So some of y'all might be familiar with him. But he definitely barred. And I finally just told Jordan, I was like, dude, you're good enough. I know you're good enough. You know you're good enough. Just go wipe them all over the place. It is 8.18 p.m. And we are getting ready to go to Arkansas right now. 8.18. Menard's card, I got your bill. Hope you're ready for a 10 hour adventure all through the night. <laughs> uh, it is 8.30 p.m. 
we were supposed to leave here at 5.30. So we've, we've literally driven like 10 minutes. And uh, we're going to uh, have a 10 hour drive ahead of us until we make it all the way to Arkansas at 6 a.m. Can I get a milk? Is it Dr. Pepper, please? Uh, we're all out of Dr. Pepper for tonight. Mm. Pepsi? We don't, have, we don't have Pepsi. I'll take Coca Cola, thank you. All right. Give me the milk, please. <laughs> Let me clarify something. I just want to clarify something. We are here, <laughs> and we are trying to go <laughs> to the drink you know. Yeah. It's about the distance we need to go. We got a long ways to go. <laughs> For this Donkey Kong tournament, I've been trying to think of a lot of strategies, and I came up with one. What is it? At two in the morning. Don't die? Just stay awake. Just stay awake. <laughs> oh. We slept in the McDonald's parking lot. And Matt was like, what's going on? Why are all these cars showing up? It's, it was five in the morning and that's when McDonald's opens. <laughs> like 230,000 points was my best but I killed it off because I just I just wasn't playing well and I just needed to restart again um, disappointed in the first three hours but at the same time Donkey Kong isn't like that where you just play for a couple of hours and then get something I mean you could play all day you know and not get anything so I'm hoping this afternoon I can do much better used to call it like the arcade was my babysitter. My parents were divorced when I was really young, about by like nine or ten years old, and it was really volatile, and I lived with my, my father. And he would go to the bar and hand me five dollars and be like, here's the arcade, make it last. Well, you're not going to get any more, and I'll be back when I'm done. And so he would drop me up at the bar, and I would make my five dollars last as long as I could, playing games that I was getting really good at. And, make it drag out. He wouldn't, it wasn't like nowadays where parents are more civilized and oh hey come get the kid. It was like he wouldn't dare call my mom and say hey come watch Matthew. He just dropped me off somewhere else because he hated her so much you know. But that's for a different documentary. <laughs>
day. 355 is my best. Gonna go for one more attempt. This is it. I'm exhausted, I'm tired. I probably should have taken more breaks, but I just love playing and I was enjoying this thing. I hope that uh, I hope that I can improve, come back, do better. It's hard because I would, you know, if I if I had one game that was 300K, I would say like I was extremely disappointed, but because I had like eight of those games, I just had it going and going and just kept falling apart. Overall, it was a productive day, but it, it it's disappointing to not have the, uh, you know, any game past that. But it's, I'm used to it, you know, I, I play Galaga like that, so it's not like something that's, that's uh, weird or strange for me or, or a normal, I'm tired, but I'm, you know, I'm still awake. I was going to tr try and play some pinball for a little bit. of those games because they put a quarter in or whatever they push start right, like and it's like after earlier. 30 seconds you're on to the next game yep. it's not like that for Mad night yep. uh in fact ironically enough and most frustrating of all we end up playing the arcade games that we have at our homes because that's what we love to put a big score on so yep. uh when i go to the ghosts and there's uh i don't know 800 machines and I'm sitting there playing Galaga, I think to myself, boy, this is stupid. Like, <laughs> this is ridiculous. And when we went to the Galloping Ghost, I was like, hey, I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna look for this game. Maybe they'll have it. And I'm looking, I'm, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm walking around that place for 45 minutes. I was like, it's not here. I'm like, you know, so I'm, I'm playing Bomb Jack. I like Bomb Jack a lot. I'm playing Bomb Jack. I was like, I gotta go to the bathroom. 
I'm walking to the bathroom, I go in the bathroom, I walk out of the bathroom and something catches my eye. It's like this little purple dinosaur thing. And I'm like, oh my gosh, there it is. <laughs> That's the game. Oh my gosh. The name of it was Boomeranger. And it was it, but it wasn't a little dinosaur. It was a rhinoceros that you that you rode around on. Yes. But for like 35 years, I'm trying to figure out what this game is to the point where I started thinking to myself, maybe I've made it up my mind. Maybe it was Congo yeah. Bongo, but... <laughs> First aluminum bicycles ever built was stolen from in, in front of the arcade because I didn't chain it up and I just wanted to play that <laughs> game. And this was when I was still living with my dad and he was out of town. Imagine that. Well, my bike got stolen and he found out. Boy, I got that one. Woo wee. <laughs> well, let me ask you this, man. Boomeranger. <laughs> we are at the video game capital of the world. World. The entire world. It's right here. It's a small. World. It's it's in this it's in this mall. It's uh well it's it's right around the corner. Video game capital. Yeah. Where's this arcade? Yeah. It's up here. I think it's right here. No, wait. no games in there. Nope. Okay. Nope. Nope. There's these games. What do we got here? Hospice. Make it. I'm gonna need that soon. Yeah. It's oh, a big mall. I hear games. I hear them. What is that? Air hockey. Bacon. Bacon. <laughs> mall. Jewelry. Jewelry's closed at like two o'clock. This place, I'll tell you. That's all right. I see Mario. I see him. Jewelry. I feel him. Oh, high scores. Oh, people, people love the arcades. You know, we, we get customers in here, oh, you know, you take me back to my childhood. You know, they're bringing their kids and they're introducing the next generation to these games. And even some of the new kids and some of this new generation, they come in here and they're just like, wow, this is awesome. This is great. You know, um, and I, we love seeing that stuff. People just, I don't know, people just love the, the feel of the arcade, you know, and it is a lot different today. Let's be real, in the 80s, this would be all smoke filled, you know. Um, you know, nowadays, no, it's a lot, the air, the air quality is a lot better, so. A little head to head. We're gonna battle it out. One beat. at the old school arcade here at the uh, Tumble Mall. Uh, not to be confused with their competitors right over here, which would be... Uh, Kramer's Crater. Kramer's Crater. Uh, there's a big rivalry going on with them right now. So uh, as you can see, that gets violent. But anyway, this is where we go to play our arcade games. We don't go in that one. Well, there is a game I do want to play in. <laughs> so I will be going in that one. But it dies. <laughs> Never played this one. There could be a possibility that it doesn't work. There's not even a token machine or a quarter machine in this arcade. You don't get to play, you just get to look at the Did you use the clutch? That's a break. Time is up, I made it like a quarter of a mile. God, well, Just traveling the country. I'm not putting 50 more cents in that, Tom. Put that Thanks a lot, buddy. Try to put that in your kitchen. <laughs> it might fit. 
<laughs> if you could see what the monitor was doing, it would be fine. I don't know if that one could be converted to an LCD or not, but oh my God. I would try to If you could out. convert that into like your living room TV, like... <laughs> You sit that on. You just sit down and watch like TV that on, on the that. couch. <laughs> Got it. So what we're gonna do? I'm gonna send you guys in. We've already did the tour. I'm just gonna have one of you go to the warehouse. One of you go to the the abandoned arcade. Lock Little as Matt know, I'm switching mine from stun to kill. So let's go. <laughs> Assault, let's go! Follow me! 